Yo, and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. Happy Tuesday to you. Uh, yeah, I got a couple things that came in the mail over the weekend, and since I had that PSA DNA order yesterday, I thought I'd just do a video on that and save all this stuff for today, because I just don't have, you know, I'm getting just a couple things a week right now. Not a whole lot coming in. One thing that did come in was my renewal for my collectibles insurance services policy. And I bring that up because it is something that I think collectors don't do nearly enough time thinking about and thinking through what if something happened. <clears throat> um, no one wants to think about that because it's not a great scenario in no matter how it turns out. But what's interesting is for us collectors having some type of protection and making sure that if there's anything that goes goofy, uh, you're protected because your typical homeowner's policy will not cover your collection. And I get questions about this from time to time of people saying, well, how, how much should I have before I need insurance? And the simple answer to that is how much are you willing to lose? <laughs> you know, if your collection's worth $5,000 and if you lost it all in some you know, natural cause, natural event or whatever, you know, are you okay with that? Like, would you be okay? If the answer is no, you need to protect that. <laughs> and it's not crazy expensive. It's not cheap. Um, but it's not, you know, I happily pay it because I want everything protected. So it's just one of those, you know, what's your threshold for pain? If something bad happened, protect that. And they've been great. Now, in all fairness, I've never had to have a claim with them. So from what I've heard of other people, it's not, not a problem. This is what this entire company does, <clears throat> is ensure gun collection, stamps, coins, sports cards, art, you know, kind of you name it. The great thing is you don't have to do an inventory. I always ask, well, I don't want to give them a list of all my stuff or it's always changing and all that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The only thing you have to tell them is itemize any, any one item that might be worth $25,000 or more. Beyond that, it's just a blanket coverage. You tell them what you, if you had an event, you would tell them what you lost and that would be that. It's kind of, they take your word for it. So yeah, anyway, that came in. So it just made me want to like, okay, I probably need to bring this up and it never hurts to talk about it more often than not. If you've heard it before, I get it, but the reality is some people haven't and a lot of people, oh, I need to do that. I need to do that. Well, get, you know, I agree. You need to do it. So if, if you're thinking you need to do it, you probably at least need to investigate how much it costs and whether or not it makes sense for you. Uh, it definitely makes sense for me. So I will be paying that forthwith. Uh, let's get to the stuff I got today or over the last few days. And uh, yeah, hang on. All right, here we go. I know a lot of you guys, I get on these kicks um, of doing different projects. And one I started working on just kind of like, ah, I need to get, see if there's any cards. I, I just kind of go looking. And one of them is my last cards of Hall of Famers. And there are like this David Ortiz card, 2018 Tops is his last Tops card. Unfortunately, there's not very many of these graded. And when they are graded, they are super dumb expensive and so what I will typically do and this you could do this for really any card that you wanted to grade that's kind of a base not terribly expensive card is I go to sport lots and I'll find a seller that has a bunch of them and I'll buy a whole bunch like in this case I bought 10 of them and I'm hoping that by going through these 10 I can find one or two nice slab candidates and send them in to get graded and the way I look at that is like these were 18 cents a piece. So I spent a dollar eighty plus shipping on these cards. The idea will be okay. Um, I send maybe two of them in. If I can do them for 15, 20 bucks a piece, these will kind of just sit around as I accumulate my next PSA order. Then great, you know. I can't a PSA 10 of this card is a hundred dollars or whatever, eighty dollars or something stupid. So I'm gonna win uh, either way, even if I don't get a 10, get a nine or two nines or maybe a nine and a 10, who knows? But I'll probably send in two, the two best ones after I go through them 
and hopefully I do a good job with that. And then I'll just have the others as extras. But yeah, that's what I do. Unless, of course, I can if I could find the card cheap and just buy it, I would do that. That would be great. And one of my buddies who is also doing this set, his name is Christian, and he sent me a note because I bought a card from him. He said, thanks again and keep collecting. Enjoy, Christian. And what he sent me, sent me some extra stuff, which is always appreciated. Never a bad thing. I'll take these cards out of the holder. So he sent me an awesome tops. Uh, I guess this would be 21. 20 maybe, 2020. You know, mega box, whatever, silver pack, mojo, something. This will be a Julie card for sure. See me an awesome Diamond King of Yvonne Rodriguez. A very cool Diamond King's card of Lou Gehrig. And a Jersey card of Pudge. So that is awesome, Christian. Thank you for the extras. Love it. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the card I bought from him was, since he's doing the last card Hall of Famer set as well, is this Topps Fred McGriff. And he had a PSA 8 on eBay. And I saw it was him. And so I start texting him. I'm like, dude, uh, let's, let's just do a deal offline for that card. And we did, we came agreed on a price and I just wanted it for my set registry. And then he goes, Hey, I have an extra nine. I know you bought an eight from me. I'll just send you the nine. And I was like, dude, that is so cool. Like, yes, I sure. I'll, I'll take a nine instead of an eight all day. This is an 04 tops. This is Fred McGriff's last card. Great thing about the last cards is you get all the cool stats for their career. And yeah. So like this year's 2023 tops, uh, Albert Pujols is another one. I will be, you know, probably doing a sports lots thing where I send it, you know, order a bunch of them once they get kind of populated into sport lots and get a ton of them uh, from one seller and then hope I have one or two that are worthy of being sent in to get slabbed. So. Here's the McGriff last card. And then I got it. So that's that card. I've got some other stuff I'm looking at on the last card hall of famer kind of run. But this one is a, this last card is just a regular uh, eBay purchase. I'm going to pull that off. Oh, okay. Hold on. Sorry. I'm moving slow today. Uh, 1964 tops mini Minoso. This is one of those that's a high number Hall of Famer, new Hall of Famer, Mini Minoso. Just kind of one of those cards that has eluded me for a little while. And I finally just pulled the trigger because it's always been kind of expensive card because it's a high number. And I'm like, eh, I don't really want to pay that. But I finally just bit the bullet and, and bought this to have in the old four decade set craziness. So. Yeah, that is it for today, guys. Very short mail day, easy stuff, not picking up a ton of stuff, just here's and there's and every once in a while. But thanks again to Christian for that. Thank you, eBay, for this. And uh, yeah, go get your collection insurance if you need it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Keep collecting.